Hello and welcome to the part 3 of our SCH Overwrite module. In the last part, we identified the vulnerability in a target software using file format fuzzing technique and we used file fuzz for that. Using fuzzing, we identified that if we send the application a string of length 602 characters, the application crashes. So in this part, we'll just create a simple POC to replicate the crash and also we'll identify or rather check if we can increase the length of the buffer that is available to us. So these are the few software that I am assuming that you as a learner have a basic knowledge of. If you don't, please check out the resources mentioned at the end of this video. They will help you in learning the software from scratch. So this is our module structure. We are on part three that is POC creation. So our target software is Microsoft Windows XP SP3 and our target application is DVD X Player Pro 5.5 which is vulnerable to a buffer overflow vulnerability which overrides the SEH pointer. This vulnerability was discovered in 2007 and it was given a rating of 6.8 out of 10 by Mitre CVE initiative and uh, if we send this application a vulnerable PLF playlist containing a long file name or a long string then this buffer overflow can be triggered. So what is a proof of concept? A proof of concept as I said is a sim simple script or a program to replicate the crash. You can create it any of your favorite languages. I will be using Python for this module and we will further enhance this POC to convert it into a proper exploit. So let's move to the lab now. So here I have a very simple Python script which creates a file name called evil.plf and it stores a buffer of 602 A's in that file. We'll open this file in our application and we'll see in the debugger what it triggers. So now I'll run this script and generate this evil.plf file. So this is the PLF file generated by our sample script or POC script and if I open it with notepad++ I'll see that there are 602 A's here. I'll close this. I'll now run immunity debugger and open our ta target application in it. Press play to run the application. Later, and now I'll open the evil PLF file or evil.plf file in the DVDX player and see what happens. So it has triggered an access violation, the application has crashed and we have overwritten EIP and we have also overwritten ESP but this is a plain buffer overflow that we explored in our last module and this is of no interest to us. So let's see have we overwritten the SEH chain or not. So this is the SEH chain and it looks like that with our current length of string we have not overwritten the SEH chain. Not a problem I'll just close this restart the debugger. And I'll go back to my script. So what I'll do is I'll increase the length of string that I'm sending the application by 500 characters. So now it will become 1102. I'll save it. I'll generate the file again. I'll go back to my immediate debugger. Run the application. later open the new PLF file so again it has triggered the vanilla buffer overflow vulnerability or a stack based buffer overflow but we are not interested in this for this module so let's check our SEH chain and this time we have overwritten the current SEH record and the next SEH record. 
so this seems to be a suitable string to send now let's see what happens if i pass this exception to the program i'll press shift f9 and as you can see here that eip has been overwritten by 41 41 41 41 which is nothing but x for capital a and similarly ecx is also overwritten by capital a but this is of no interest to us now let's follow esp to find out the buffer that we had sent follow and dump so clearly our esp has not been overwritten with a's in this case after passing the exception i'll just scroll down to find where my buffer is so here it is so here is the buffer that we have sent the application now what i'll do next is i'll pass it another 500 block of a's to check if I can increase the length of this buffer. So let me just copy the last address of this buffer so that I can verify that we have indeed increased the length of our buffer. I'll copy and copy to clipboard. No, I'll paste it. So this is the last address on which our A's was our A's were written. I will go back to our POC. I will give it another 500 A's. So that makes it 602. And save. I will generate it again. Oops. I will have to restart the debugger. Now I will generate the file again. And I uh, will play the application. later now let's open the new PDF file so the vanilla stack based buffer overflow has triggered let's pass this exception to the program using shift f9 and uh, if I follow ESP again follow in dump and I'll just scroll down to my A's so here they are and this time this is the last address on which the last of capital A's have been stored I'll just copy this address second copy clipboard and I'll paste it here okay. Now again what I'll do is I'll change my POC and I'll increase this buffer by a length of another 500 A's. So this time it becomes 2102 A's and then I'll repeat the process to check if we have further increased the length of the buffer. This would ensure that we have sufficient space for our shell code. Though I think even the previous length of 1602 characters was sufficient but it still it makes no harm to have a more buffer for our shell code we'll save it and uh, I'll restart the debugger yes I'll generate a new file and uh, I'll run the application later I'll open the newly generated PLF file so stack based buffer overflow has been triggered let's pass this exception to the program and uh, follow the ESP in dump and this time let's check what is the last of last memory address on which the A's have been written this is it yes so let me just copy this address copy to clipboard I'll come back to notepad file here and paste it now let's find out the difference between this and this 
put it on hex we have 1 2 f v 8 8 minus 1 2 f 7 a 0 and this is equal to 3 e 8 which is in decimal is 1000 characters more so we have managed to gain a further buffer of around 1000 characters more from this position to this position which is evident in our POC as well. So in our next part we will further enhance this POC to control the execution of relevant registers and jump to the memory location that is controlled by us. So these are the few learning resources that you can use to learn more about the software that we are using in this module and also the techniques that we are using in this module. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next part. Meanwhile, please subscribe to our channel Yakshas CSC and follow us on Twitter. Our Twitter handle is at the rate Yakshas443. And if you want the files and PDF slides for this module or the previous modules, all you have to do is tweet about either of the modules, mention our Twitter handle. And once we receive your tweet, we'll send you the download link of the files via Twitter DM.